Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will be discussing about one of the tabs in the ANSYS Flow and Ribbon layout, which is the Domain tab. Let's open ANSYS Fluent in Solution mode. Go to File, Read, select Mesh and pick the Mesh file. Once the Mesh or Case file is loaded, now go to the Domain tab. The Domain tab has many groups, Mesh, Zones, Interfaces and so on. The focus of this lesson is on the most commonly used mesh group. If display mesh after reading option is unchecked in the Fluent launcher, although the mesh file is loaded successfully in Fluent, as you can observe, nothing can be seen in the graphics window. Now go to the display button which will open a mesh display dialog box. The display panel controls the visibility of the mesh entities in the graphics window. By default, all the entities in the surfaces list are selected. You can click on this deselect all shown button to deselect all those surfaces which are selected. The select all shown button selects all the available surfaces in the list. If we go to the toggle tree view, you can see the items in the list are arranged in list view but you can also group them by name or by surface type. Let me now select only the wall surface. For this, I can either use deselect all shown button to deselect all surfaces and left click on the wall surface to select only that surface or left click on each of the surfaces to unselect them manually except the wall surface. Under options, we have a few rendering options available like nodes, edges, faces, partitions and overset. Usually, I am interested to see the surfaces and mesh lines on the model and hence I will be focusing on only edges and faces in this video. Toggle between the available rendering options to select the option of your choice. Let me click and select faces for now. Click on display and as you can see, the whole surface is now visible in the graphics window. I will now select edges by checking the edges option using the left mouse button. When this option is selected, the edge type tab gets activated giving us some additional options to choose from. You can now click on display to view the mesh lines on the wall surface in the graphics window. If you would like to view inside the mesh model, you can manipulate the transparency level. Let me now unselect edges and increase the value of transparency. Click on display and as you can see in the graphics window, the model becomes transparent and you can now see through the surface. Next, we can use the perform mesh check option under the check drop down to evaluate the mesh for any possible errors. Clicking on the perform mesh check button will print the information regarding the mesh such as domain extents, volume statistics and face area statistics to the console window in addition to checking the mesh and printing the error message if any. If no errors are found, a done message is printed as seen here. So everything looks good. Next, let us go ahead and check the mesh quality. For that, just click on this quality button and select evaluate mesh quality from the drop down menu. You can see that two mesh quality indicators namely minimum orthogonal quality and maximum aspect ratio are displayed in the console window. The recommended value for minimum orthogonal quality is 0.1 although the solver will still work for smaller values depending on the case. For aspect ratio, it is recommended to have this value around 100 in the core regions of the mesh. However, the solver allows for larger aspect ratios on the order of 1000 near the walls. Next, I'll go to units. 
By default, Fluent only uses SI units under the hood. However, for convenience of the user, it is possible to change the input and display units of the variables as required. For example, if I want to impose temperature in Celsius, here is what I would do. There is a trick you can do in panels in Fluent to quickly find the thing you want to select. I know that temperature starts with T, so I can click on the slider bar and then type T on my keyboard. When I do that, you can see it takes me right to temperature and I can select it, change the units to Celsius and then click close. Let's now talk about the info button. The info button has a list of options to provide different information regarding the mesh such as the mesh size, zones, partitions, etc. For example, if you select mesh size, information regarding the number of nodes, faces, cells and partitions will be displayed in the console window. Go ahead and explore for yourself what the other options here do. There are some additional options under the mesh group, scale and transform. If we have a model whose units needs to be changed, then scale option can be used. When you select scale, it opens a scale mesh dialog box using which we can convert the mesh from various units of measurement to the SI unit. If you'd like to reposition the mesh, go to transform and select either translate or rotate. To summarize, in this lesson, we have understood the functioning of the various operations in the mesh section of the domain tab. Specifically, we learned about the mesh display dialog box, the info button, how to change or set up the working units, how to perform mesh check, and how to evaluate mesh quality. We also talked about advanced options like scale and transform. That brings us to the end of our video.